Welcome back again. My interviews are continuing. We are here at the backstages of Tuska Festival with Victor from Brum here. Hello, hello. Hello, thank you for taking the time to chat with me. Pleasure is mine. <laughs> Brumir is a Finnish melodic death metal band that I think has a very poetic, beautiful harmonies, very poetic, beautiful soundscape and lyrics and um, yet a lot of power and like masculinity mm -hmm. and uh, I'm just so curious to know more about how your band got started. Can you share me like the birth story? Yeah, this is like, it's kind of funny and it's kind of classic at the same time. We were um, we were 16 at music camp, mm. Popiat's Quadratorius summer camp. Yeah. And um, I used to play drums, I was a drummer. And um, and you know, there's a lot of, of different age ages there. It's like kind of a, it's everything from 14 to 30 year, you know, hobbyists and professionals going there to learn new stuff or whatever. And we were there, everybody from Grimmir, now from Grimmir, like, um, we saw each other. We were the only guys with the long hair and, you know, the, the Demon Warrior shirts or whatever. And we like connected there, okay, let's just play a cover. And we played the cover and that was it. And I, I just, the first time I ever sang was this, really. But I was already, I was a drummer before and I was kind of phasing out drums. I knew that I wanted to make fast music, but I don't want to practice. I'm a lazy fucker. Mm. Sorry, excuse my French. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so, um, so like it was kind of natural to transition to, for me to sing in, 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 in Brumi, like I wanted to make fast music, but I didn't want to practice the drums to be fast. So it was like, mm. okay, let's make a band who can play the exact music that we like, like, you know, we like folk and all, symphonic, black and or whatever. Mm. And uh, then just okay, let's make a band. We played a cover and it, people liked it and it was like a mini hit on YouTube. Like, oh. It's a better cover and the um, and rest is history, I guess. We came back to town and we were like, hey, let's continue this fun, you know, musical connection we had. And mm. Here we are 16 years later. <laughs> 16 years later? 16 years later. Playing at Tosca? Yeah, yep. Um, so, how, can you share me your journey as a vocalist? Like... Yeah, um, it was like, yeah, like I said, um, we started the cover band, we just played one song and I just wanted to, you know, I, I felt, I always felt like, you know, I was writing lyrics since I was really small. Mm -hmm. Like when I, I was 11 when I, I got into to extreme metal, like I was... 11? Yeah, yeah, I skipped, I went straight from Metallica to, to Dimo Borger and, and <laughs> General and Mayhem. I skipped, the, it was like going to from, from you know, skipping... Um, beers and going straight into hard drugs or something, you know, like hardcore. Hardcore, it's just like I, it, I skipped, uh, you know, uh, like the phases of Iron Maiden and Slayer and this in between. So I went straight to the deep end, and um, and the whole world, you know, the narratives inspired me. I'm also a big fantasy fan at the time, mm. and I was used to I read, used to read a lot of fantasy when I was a kid. So I was also writing lyrics even before I started say, singing and I was writing music. And I always like I kind of I guess I identified more as a, like a, a storyteller and a, 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 um, than than a, a drummer that I used to be. So this was like really nice. Like I just okay, I had an opportunity to sing a cover of a band that I used to like a lot, still like a lot of course. But um, um, and then it just kind of happened. And of course then I'm, my throat was sore as hell in the uh. beginning. I was just like. <laughs> And this went on for a couple of years, and I was always sick. Also, like I just felt like we played a lot, and it's like I did it wrong. And I don't know what happened, but at some point, like I, it somehow, I, it was never a conscious decision to practice or anything. I just did it enough. Yeah. Maybe it's like my maybe throat is full of scar tissue or something, but but that's the kind of like I just kind of transitioned into it by accident, and then it took it a few years to kind of get to understand what I was actually doing. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that's what I find many singers have done in the extreme vocal scene, like they've just drawn or drifted to their spot <laughs> as a singer and they experience a lot of throat and vocal fold trauma <laughs> before being like, okay, I think I've built some more stamina now to learn something more mm. and this doesn't hurt anymore, mm. wow. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, like I, I was, I was always like in the beginning, I was embarrassed about it, like about growling vocals. Like I never could ever anywhere in any way, like place, practice it 
or just do it in, into the air. You know, it always had to be with the music, with the band, because I think it was it was silly to just like practice like oh, uh, oh, 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 you know, like it's like what the fuck are people doing? Like it's like just it's like a raw expression thing. And then later I was like, oh wait a second, yeah, you actually have to kind of learn this stuff. Mm. So yeah, it took me really long to kind of be comfortable with the fact that I'm, I'm growling and making weird sounds. I'm all, I come from a family with more of kind of traditional music background, so um, so it was also a weird thing for for my some of my close family to kind of get a grasp of what 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 is this what is this music what is what are you doing? So it got it had some some baggage with it, and it took several years to get over it. And actually, one of the the hardest things was clean vocals oh. because I also always felt like you know I used to sing in choirs I was in, in music class when I was small and stuff but I was like kind of ashamed of that as well I don't know what, what it is like about this shame thing but 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 then also when we started making brimming like I knew I could sing but I didn't want to do it so all the other guys from the band they were the clean vocals oh. and it's only only like our third album that I actually found my voice actually found my voice wow it, you know, so there's it's ten years in in that so like actually found and also found that the, the the growling part also that there's a lot of expression there and totally. it's like there's a whole range that yeah it just discovered it slowly by slowly. I think it was Jukka Pelkonen from Omnium Gatherum who said that one of his um, vocalist light bulb moment uh, was that he realized that he can actually shift his placement like. In while doing extreme vocals, and he can still sing in the mask and use sort of a twang and like tongue placement mm. things to like change the frequency. I don't want to say change the note mm. because um, um, we just had an interview with Durmia Gatila, and Betty just said that um, it's just white noise to him, so that's why I like to use the word frequency, but mm -hmm. a lot of the fundamentals also work when screaming. Yeah, yeah. It's re your body is a re resonator, you know, yeah. you're always like... And so like this kind of like, yeah, this, this that I discovered, like this, it's so, like, there's so many, many nuances there. And you mm -hmm. have like a whole dynamic there. And also like I started screaming, just not, not just growling, but like you have more like actual voice, voice there. And that was a really powerful moment to discover that, okay, I can do this. Yeah. And I think that actually came from in the studio when I was, I've, I've been producing our records myself, oh. recording, mixing, everything. And um, so when I'm in the studio recording myself and I'm stressed and I'm frustrated and it's like, Fah! and then, wait, this sounds good. Wow. And then like suddenly I have like a new level of, of, of expression that I now use all the time. Yeah, I actually like I am I'm not an extreme vocalist. I'm not an extreme vocal expert. I'm my expertise lies more on like um, musical theater and pop and jazz and maybe rock, that kind of glam rocky more like mm -hmm. a grit than yeah. like a grunt. Yeah. But I've been like dipping my my toes into this and I have a similar like experience. I uh, experienced uh, a sort of a road rage moment and I was like <laughs> Oh, wow, what was that? <laughs> I can relate, yeah. <laughs> so I think there's something there. Yeah, yeah. Um, let me ask you, how has your summer been with Brimmer so far? Are you gigging? Are you gigging still? Yeah, well, we had a bit of an easier summer, which is um, kind of nice for a change. Mm. To have, uh, well, you know, there's also this backlog still of, of, of bookings from the whole COVID thing. So, like, all the festivals, there's not so easy to, to get slots. But we had a really good run so far with um, yeah. in Tampere and Omi Rock. And, um, and this is, of course, the highlight of the summer mm -hmm. for many reasons. And uh, then we have a couple of more, but it's a bit easier, which is also nice because it's been a really tough year. And um, it's nice to have some time to spend at the countryside fishing. And, Oh, you know, yeah. normal things. Yeah, grounding. Yeah, because still, like, you know, it's not like we're mega rock stars making millions of euros of money, so you still have to work. No other things. I'm a sound guy, I make sound for film and TV. Oh. So you have your, your day job, so to speak, and then you have your weekend gigs. So sometimes summer is like, it's the most exhausting time. Totally. And like, um, yeah, so then you're like, and then you're like, something, what the fuck, it's snowing again. And, um, I think you're in the loop, so it's really nice to have actually like uh, at least like three, four weekends off. Wow, yeah. that's that's decent. Yeah, but Premier we had really really good shows, 
um, and maybe some of you people in social media have seen this fish thing we have going on. Fish thing? Yeah. Like we, have a, we have a song about, um, about salmon, because it's salmon, wild salmon is really uh, endangered species, mm -hmm. and it's like, um, and there's a lot of, of, of stuff that should be done differently with fish farming and, and stuff. It's like a whole industry and also like this with hydroelectric dams, no matter how good it is for the, you know, with green energy, like there's, there's problems there. So when we were, uh, some dedicated to salmon, and it got out of control. Like uh, we made merchandise from people like, are you sure this fish thing is gonna work? Like they're like, I'm like, just trust me. And we sold out all those, and then it ended up. Now we have a fish. It's like a 60, 70 centimeter um, soft, like a plushy yeah. bike, named called Steam, that Steve. we throw into the crowd, and there's a mosh pit turned into a fish pit. So we've had uh, this summer. We'd be we put try to clubs all spring, and now we have it in the festivals, and it's been a smash hit. Wow! So today, right. today is, is possible depending on the weather, of yeah. course. Well, it's kind of nice fish weather, actually. Fishy weather. Yeah, but I think it's going to be the biggest fish pit in the history of mankind. Ah. Ooh! <laughs> that is that is something else. We will try and catch that. <laughs> yeah. So that's like my my summer in a nutshell: fishing and uh, fishes, uh, fish pits and uh, stuff. That sounds fun. Apart from that, do you have time for creating? Are you like, do you compose as a band as a whole? Well, um, our process is kind of different than usual. I don't know what what is the norm, but um, I'm a, I have a, a I'm a professional sound guy, mm. a sound designer. I made lots of, of different kind of music, and my process has always been very digital. It's like electronic music production style. Wow. And I don't, I don't, I, I compose most of our music, even though I don't really play any, any, you know, instrument. But I know all I've been producing members. I know exactly how guitars work, and I can play guitar slowly. So I just can make the riffs and then just like you know chop them up and, and make them into the correct tempo. So it's like this process is, is really like it's like me in in the bedroom or like like you know cellar downstairs studio in my home, just like making stuff and then sending it to them, hey, you like this? And then they're like, yeah. Then I continue making it and uh, then I send them, okay, guitars, can you play this riff? Like, how would you play? But the process is, is, is different. So we, we don't, sometimes we don't ever play songs together before we're in the studio. And I just, you know, they have just listen to the demos. Oh, we, we don't right. practice together as much as a band. We are, our process is, is, yeah, it's kind of like this electronic music production kind of process. Which we, we're always saying like this is the last time we do it like this because it has a lot of downsides. Totally. But it adds a kind of um, it's non-linear. You know, we can always switch things around even far into the process, mm. which is nice. You don't have to prepare ten songs, then go to the studio. Then you can like kind of write as you go. Mm. But right now it's been this summer has been really difficult. Ever since um, there was a lot of baggage from this whole from last year when we made the last album, mm. like you know, mental. Then we had a crazy tour last. Um, winter which is like six weeks and then come back and I'm like you know I'm six weeks behind on normal work because I broke my arm on tour and I couldn't do any any work like you know like MIDI stuff no I mean like yeah I couldn't do I have a company I couldn't manage any of anything, like, anything. I couldn't write yeah. emails anything you know I was supposed to work you know from there you know Damn. managing our post-production things in the and so I come home six weeks behind and this baggage has still lingered so I haven't really had time to to make anything, which is a shame because it's the most inspiring time. You just release a new album, you go tour, mm. so many ideas. But then, like you know, it's just. But yeah, I'm, I'm now I'm getting to it. I have now reserved some time to, to write, and um, I have, I'm, I'm I'm actually exploring with with riffs and concerts. That's great. Like at least you have the mental states and place mm. to go for it, rather than just like keep building up, be keeping building up and like not being able to express that. Yeah, well n now I'm, I'm reaching the limit, but yeah, I need quickly to, to have, a, have a time. I told my colleagues yesterday that I need now to, I need to, I need output. That's good, yeah. that's good. So I'm afraid we need to conclude very soon. It would be so, so, so nice to just like keep chatting with you, but we know our both schedules mm -hmm. are are tied today. So to conclude, what is the rest of the year looking like to Brumir? Well, we're gonna have some club shows in spring. Uh, I mean, sorry, autumn. Yeah. And uh, there's nothing announced yet, but there will be more info soon. So Where? We'll see you there. Um, it's a still a secret. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna give, but it's, it's gonna be in um, 
Ja tietysti Ethan Thunberg on going to have some shows. Yeah. I'm sure we're going to have a Helsinki Club shows. We'll see. Our agent is still a bit secretive about it. And then we'll, maybe if we're really lucky, maybe we go have another European tour. Beautiful. But um, but for me personally, the most important thing is just to to get out my new ideas ideas and try to to write a few songs, and then maybe next year we will get some you know new shit. Beautiful. So. Okay, so a lot of creative times and some gigs in Finland. Yep. Where can people find info about your gigs? Um, www.brymir.com as a normal basic it sounds. There is all the info about the gigs and Instagram, there you get all the fun content, I fish things, Fishy random things. things, fun things. We are a fun loving band. We all have fun and you can see it on, on, on all our across our platforms. So check it out and join the party. Totally share some love to the guys and please come to their Finnish gigs if you are around. We are definitely coming and jamming along your gig and on that note have the bestest of gig. Thank you so much. Thank you so much and see you later. Bye.